this week saw a new record in New York real estate prices, and that is saying something. 650 Madison Avenue, an office building with street-level retail space at 59th uh, and Madison in New York, was sold by private equity firm Carlisle Group for $1.3 billion. That is more than $2,000 a square foot for that space. And if that were not enough, literally across the street, a 40% stake in the GM building was sold for $1.36 billion, valuing the entire structure at $3.4 billion. One of the buyers, uh, a Chinese property firm. So does this smell like a bubble to anybody? Well, with me now is real estate developer who owns swaths of prime property here in New York City, Joe Sitt is the founder and CEO of Thor Equities. Joe, great to see you again. Great to see you, Betty. How are you doing? Well, good, good. Well, some people are saying, I was talking to some property developers uh, over this past week, and they say, look, what's happening on 650 Madison Avenue may be an example of some of the froth that is going on in Manhattan. All this liquidity, particularly from outside the U.S., chasing yield here in New York. I, I would say that it's a result of six things. Overall, I call it Six. The, yeah. <laughs> Overall, I call it the London effect. The same way we saw London become an international investment market with low cap rates, meaning high pricing, New York has come into its own, USA has come into its own. And it's a result of several things. One, yes, as you said, yield star people out there, treasury rates still extremely low, although up 50 or 60 basis points from its absolute low a month ago. It's still very, very cheap. Two, as I call it, the government put. You've got the U.S. government and governments around the world saying we're going to stabilize markets, we're going to stimulus markets. Three, debasements of currencies. You've got 38 countries globally all at the same time Easy. debasing their yes. currencies right now and thus making money worth a lot less. Four, global billionaires growing in leaps and bounds needing some place to put their money. Statist well, that, that connects to one, chasing the yield. You got it right. 85% growth we're expecting the next 10 years of billionaires to 4,000 people. Chinese will increase their billionaires by 215% to mm. 483 billionaires. The ones Brazil, that we know of. The ones that we know <laughs> of. Well said, which will get to one of my points. Um, five is the United States is okay. What does that mean? We are coming back ahead of everybody else. Tech is happening. Energy is happening. And that's translating into a third thing that nobody's talking about. The Heartland's got a shot now with manufacturing. With cheap energy, I think chemical manufacturing, mm. um, steel manufacturing come back. And all of that's resulting in what? People want to get their money into the United States. You've got flight capital coming from so many different places for different reasons. But Joe, talk to me about the billionaires, though, because that was another subject that I think has become uh, you know, a, 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 a source of gossip as well as a source of worry for some developers, which is these billionaires are coming in and they're buying these penthouses uh, here in New York City. They're raising the prices. And some, are, some of these penthouses, I think, are going for like $7,000 a square foot. And they're just letting them sit there because they just need this. They just, they just need to park their cash somewhere. You know, isn't that a danger sign? You know, if you're a billionaire or you're a sovereign wealth fund, which is where a lot of the money co is coming from as well, and you look at the globe and you look at your alternatives, where am I going to protect my money, make a decent return, and be able to hedge myself for future risk of inflationary forces um, devaluing my money? You know, New York sounds like a really safe bet. So it could be buying an apartment or even the case in point, you know, the GM building being sold right. and 650 Madison. You know, in the case of 650 Madison, I've heard similar. Did, you know, was it overpaid? Is it a bubble? And you, you don't know, think so. Well, I, on its face, it looks like it. $650 million sale four or five years ago, $950 million sale a year ago, and a billion three and sale today. And now 1.3, yeah. I don't think it's a bubble. I look at who the buyers are and interesting, both very sophisticated group, Highgate and Crown, both smart companies, know how to value add, and where they're seeing the greatest value is actually in the retail component and the ability to dramatically pop the rents as a result of the luxury consumer that's there. Well, what do you think eventually they're going to do with this, with this building? Um, I think that their goal, like most goals of the more sophisticated buyers, which are still the buyers of assets like that, and how they did it, and we'll talk about it, has to do with speed is value add change out the rents and then eventually candidly the bubble will happen when those sovereign wealths that move a lot more slowly start coming in which is where I see the bubble coming in the next wave 
what I see is we see so far we've had Koreans, we've got Singaporeans, we've got Israelis, yeah. APG out there spending money in New York and the United States. And now I see the next wave, which is going to be that overspender. It's new young money. It's money coming from SOFAS, Azerbaijan, Angola, Malaysia, Hong Kong Monetary. And that wave that hasn't been able to That's going to come here on shore. It's coming on shore, and that's what's going to really end up bubbling. So far, not a bubble. Both of those deals were executed by wise movers and shakers. Yeah. In the case of the GM Building Board, as they said, by the Safra Group and the Chinese. And it was Qatar, actually, believe it or not, that was the seller of GM, although not reported. Oh, not, oh, okay. Well, that's interesting then. But, you know, some are saying, just staying with the Chinese, because as you mentioned, the Chinese billionaires, uh, is there a sense that they might be buying up America the way the Japanese did back in the 80s? They didn't start yet, but I know that's their goal. The difference, you know, the difference in New York How is, do you know that's their goal? Um, because we spend a lot of time with a lot of investors from that region. We're always raising money, as I say, Thor Equities. There's never enough money for deals because there's always another one coming out there. Um, for us now, it's a balancing act. On the one hand, we were very aggressive as a company for four or five years, buying up the town. Now it's starting to get a little more expensive, so we slow down, we're more careful. But the big edge we need is speed, and both of those groups acted with speed, and most of those foreign buyers aren't able to move at that pace. Okay. By the time the market allows for that slower pace is that next wave I mentioned of sovereigns that will potentially bring us eventually into a bubble. Joe, great to see you again. Thanks for stopping by. I always, uh, always love talking property with you. Joe Sitt, the CEO and founder of Thor Equities.